Hey guys, welcome back to the next video. This time we're going to be checking out my first ever Gen 5 NVMe. Does it really need this heatsink? <laughs> When it comes to Gen 5, I honestly didn't believe that they needed heat sinks, but this does. With the heat sink on, the highest the temperature goes is 62 Celsius, which considering it's still high, but it's within its operating temperature. So a Gen 5 drive. Now, when it comes to the read and write of this particular drive, it does have a read of 12,000 megabytes and over 11,000 writes. Now, I did clock this at over 12,000 uh, reads, and I did clock it over 11,000 writes as well. So the advertised speeds on this box are correct. I did push this without the heatsink. Now, before I actually got this drive, I did a little research on YouTube as well as Google to see what the fastest speeds were of Gen 5. Now, a lot of people were saying you need a heat sink. You need something to soak up all that heat that the controller does generate. Remember, it's not the NAND that actually generates that type of heat. It's the controller, the big controller. Now, that's where the overall heat dissipation comes in when it comes to a heat sink, but, I never believed that these things would run that hot. 86 Celsius, that's what I clocked this at. 86 Celsius, that is crazy for a drive without a heatsink. So I'm gonna say it right now, Gen 5 drives, they require a heatsink to run properly. Without a heatsink, this thing dropped. The performance completely plummeted because it was trying not to kill itself. That is a good thing. So there is a little bit of protection there. But also remember, you can damage it if you don't have a heat sink because it's not meant to run at them types of speeds at 100% of the time. That's why these need a heat sink. So if you're gonna buy a Gen 5 drive, make sure you buy one with a heat sink because I'm telling you, 86 Celsius is not normal. I would not want to run that 100% of the time because honestly, it would end up dying and killing itself. So that's just one of them things. It's the latest when it comes to NVMe storage. And of course, that is just nuts. The speeds, it's not the fastest drive, but it's definitely one of the fastest NVMe's for Gen 5 on the planet. It's one of them. Whether that's, a, whether that's something you want, if you want to buy it, of course, I will leave a link down below. I'll make sure to leave the link for the A-Pacer website so you guys can actually check out 
every single particular detail you want when it comes to these NVMEs. They do do other NVMEs as well. Gen 4, SSDs. But what I will say is for the price of this, I, up on this NVMe it was £350. Whether the price has come down or not, I'm not sure. But I will make sure to put it by here so you guys are actually updated when it comes to the current price. Now, Gen 5 is definitely expensive right now because it's new. But that's completely up to you. If you want the fastest, you want the newest NVMe storage out there, then I definitely recommend the a or 2 terabyte Gen 5. It definitely gets my stamp of approval just for just being absolutely nuts when it comes to speeds. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe because I've got DDR5 RAM coming next to review. I've got fans from Thermaltake. I've got something coming from Noctua. <laughs> I've got loads of stuff coming. I've got a meeting with Target next week to make sure that I can actually bring more products to you for you guys to watch. So, and as always, I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend and weekend week ahead of you. This is Richard from Welsh Tech. Good. Bye.